A cyber attack on a little-known health care company last month has caused major trouble and serious financial consequences for hospitals, doctors, and patients around the country. Stephanie Sai looks at the impact and the efforts to solve these problems. Amna, the American Hospital Association has described the hack as, quote, the most serious cyber attack in history on the health care system. It began about two weeks ago when hackers shut down a payment processing system run by a company called Change, owned by United Healthcare. Change essentially functions as a middleman between insurers, providers, hospitals, and pharmacies. Hospitals and other medical practices have not been able to process bills and get payments they need to operate. Doctors and patients have been unable to get insurance approvals for some procedures. And until a few days ago, pharmacies were also impacted. Here's what one doctor in Texas posted on TikTok. This morning, I spent probably several hours calling several pharmacies because my patients hadn't received their prescriptions that I prescribed last week. Um, so I... It's not usual that I have to call the pharmacies, like usually I only call the pharmacies if they're like shortages or controlled substances or something else is going on. She suspects the delays were because of the health care hack. This week, the Department of Health and Human Services announced steps to help, including providing some advanced payments for providers. But problems remain. Dan Diamond has been covering this for The Washington Post and joins me now. Dan, uh, welcome to the News Hour. You heard me describe some of the problems. Give us a sense of the scope and the magnitude of the disruptions and who has borne the brunt of the impact. Stephanie, Change Healthcare was the middleman for tens of millions of insurance claims every day. So that means virtually everyone in healthcare is being touched by this directly because they're waiting to get paid or they work with performers and, and, and players that are waiting. Uh, right now, there are real pains for physicians. Physicians don't necessarily have the cash flow for now two weeks of not getting paid. So we have talked here at The Washington Post, we've talked to doctors who have had to take out emergency loans that have gone on, on heroic measures to just keep their practices open. Hospitals also have been able uh, to scramble and, and try to figure out how to keep their operations paid for. Pharmacists that you mentioned earlier, I talked to a therapist who hasn't been paid. It really is touching every corner of healthcare right now. Is critical patient care being impacted? Right now, no. Uh, there are efforts to make sure that patients are being protected. There are procedures that are still taking place. It's a back-end issue, but the back-end issues are so severe that inevitably, if this continues, there will be problems facing uh, the front end. There will be doctors who can't keep their lights on. There will be staff who might have to be furloughed. So eventually there will be a crisis point, and that's what health officials are trying to stave off by talking about or starting to advance emergency loans to keep these providers open. So we're now already at least two weeks in to since the hack was reported, and there have been reports that United Healthcare may have paid a $22 million ransom to the cyber gang purportedly behind the attack. Why isn't the system back up and running if that is the case? First, I think ransomware groups, hackers, are not necessarily the most reliable partners here. And even though there may have been a payment from United Health, they have not confirmed that. Uh, it's not necessarily going to resolve the issue when you're dealing with one of these groups. There still are systems that need to be checked. There's data that was encrypted and was taken and may not be back in the hands of United, assuming they made this payment. So it's very risky when dealing with ransomware to begin with. And the scope of this hack was so extensive, it's hard to just flip the switch back on, even if the hackers have returned uh, what was taken. What made Change Healthcare vulnerable to this? And, and more broadly, Dan, what does it expose about the weaknesses in our healthcare system? Change was vulnerable in part because they're a big target. Even before United bought them, and United is a major healthcare company, one of the largest companies in the United States, Change was already this major processor of claims. And they take data from hospitals, from doctors, and then check that data, pass it on to the insurance company, they're in the middle of all of these transactions. They have sensitive medical data that is very alluring to hackers. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I, I don't think we know the ways that hackers found their way into change, but healthcare companies are under attack in this way all the time. 
This just happens to be a particularly large hack. And it also has, has pointed to how much we rely on just a handful of healthcare companies as consolidation increases across the industry. Change is this major middleman. They're owned by United Health, which has its fingers all over uh, healthcare right now. And that is something that government officials that I've talked to this week have been thinking about as well. There is an antitrust probe into United through the Justice Department preceded this. But there is a real question about what are the risks if so much of healthcare is concentrated in just a few hands. Um, we, we talked a little bit about the Department of Health and Human Services response. How do physicians and hospitals feel about how the government has reacted? They're not feeling great, Stephanie. Uh, no one is happy with the response so far. Hospitals have gotten more help. They have deeper pockets, so they're able to weather the pain better than some other organizations. But even hospitals say they need more uh, than the loans that are being offered potentially by, by the federal government. Physicians are not eligible for those loans right now from the federal government. United Health has made available emergency loans for doctors, but what they've told us, they're getting offered pennies on the dollar. They might be down hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars at this point, in claims that haven't been paid, and they're being offered thousands of dollars, maybe $10,000 to patch that hole, which they can't do. So there is bipartisan outrage in Congress. I was at the White House earlier today talking with officials who say this is really something that they're looking to the private sector right now to try and solve before the federal government steps in more. Dan Diamond with The Washington Post. Dan, thanks so much for your reporting. Thank you, Stephanie.